This is It Is Written. I'm John Bradshaw. Thanks for joining me. Think of someone you know who is talented or someone you know of. You might think of Lionel Messi, the Argentinian soccer or football player, Tom Brady, greatest quarterback of all time, Daniel Day-Lewis, the actor who won three Best Actor Academy Awards, Helen Mirren, Meryl Streep, Paul McCartney, rugby player Brody Retallick, the cellist Yo-Yo Ma, artists like Pablo Picasso, hmm, Picasso, Van Gogh or Van Gogh, Monet, and so on. Now, I'm reaching for the easy and the obvious examples, but there are talented people in all areas of life. Talented teachers and sculptors and talented writers and talented pastry chefs and cooks, talented gardeners and so on. And how'd they get that way? Do you think Claude Monet just stumbled out of bed one day and started painting water lilies? No, Mozart wasn't born writing symphonies. How were these talented people able to do what they did? You know the old joke, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. Now some sports people are born with a little more natural inclination than others. That's often true in any sphere. But at the end of the day, everybody's got 24 hours a day and the opportunity to improve opportunities and be the best that they can be. And Jesus spoke to this in a parable found in Matthew chapter 25. It's the parable of the talents. And we're going to look at that today in our ongoing series on the parables of Jesus, Lessons for All Time. Matthew chapter 24 speaks of the signs of Christ's coming. Matthew 25 begins with the parable of the ten virgins and the need to have the oil of the Holy Spirit so we can be prepared for eternity. In other words, Matthew 25 starts with Jesus saying that God will give you everything you need to be ready for heaven. The next parable, that's really interesting. Remember, a parable is not an allegory. Allegories are longer. They typically have people or characters representing different ideas. Think about John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress, where Christian represents the sinner, the believer. Evangelist shows Christian the path to the celestial city and so on. Parables are shorter stories and they convey moral or spiritual lessons. Jesus uses the story of a man sowing seed to teach an important spiritual lesson. Or the story of a man beaten and left for dead on the side of the road, ignored by church leaders, but helped by a hated Samaritan. These stories were evocative and they stayed in the minds of the people who heard them. And so we have a parable in Matthew chapter 25, starting in verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven, that's the kingdom of divine grace on earth, God's work of salvation on behalf of humanity. The kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. Now, who is the traveling man? That's Jesus. The far country he goes to, that's heaven. Jesus was speaking about him leaving earth, going to heaven, and commissioning his servants, giving his servants responsibility. Verse 15, And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them, and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. This parable deals with what our lives should look like while we're waiting for Jesus to return. It deals with our responsibility before God, or maybe we should say, It deals with the possibilities we have as we look forward to the return of Jesus to the world. So what's a talent? A talent is a measure of weight. The Greek word is talenton, which means a balance or a pair of scales, and therefore something that is weighed. Now, there are various definitions as to how much a talent weighed. and Then it differs if you're talking about a talent of gold or a talent of silver. It seems as though a talent was a little more than 70 pounds. Whatever it is, It's indicative that the master has entrusted to his servants some considerable means, and he wants them to use those means wisely. Now, let's look at this a little bit together. Think about these talents. The word talent in the English today comes from that Greek word talenton. What are the talents that God has given us? 
And what talents do you have? Now, there's a tendency, I think, on the part of people to say, I'm not a singer, I can't speak in public, I don't play an instrument, I can't draw, I'm not athletic, therefore I'm not talented. Ah, but that's not true. Even if you cannot leap tall buildings in a single bound, there is no question that God has given you talents and that you can return those talents to God one day with a great return, which means that you can make a difference for the kingdom of God, a major difference. And I'll tell you how in just a moment. Finance is a big subject. Everybody wants to have enough money. How can you have God's blessing on your financial situation? I'd like to give you today's free offer, More Than Enough. To receive more than enough, simply call us, 800-253-3000. You could write to the address on your screen or visit us online at iiwoffer.com. That's 800-253-3000 or iiwoffer.com. Thanks for joining me today on It Is Written. The parable of the talents suggests something important to us both, and that is Jesus considers that we are talented. We have talents. In the parable, not everyone has the same amount of talents. Some were given five, some two, others just one, but everyone was given something. And everyone was expected to use that for the master, to increase it. Now that gives rise to a question. How do you use your talents for the glory of God? You know, honestly, I feel a little bit sorry for people who are fantastically talented. I'll tell you why. You get someone who's a really good singer, for example, then there's the temptation to go after worldly or secular glory, which can be hazardous to your spiritual life. When you're young and talented and you could become rich and famous, that's a temptation, and one that's fraught with challenges. Then there are people who are geniuses at business. They make a lot of money. Nothing wrong with having money, far from it. But people who are wealthy have temptations and worries that people who are not wealthy do not have. Jesus makes it clear that everyone has talents given to them by God and that the primary purpose of those talents is that they be used for God's glory and not our own. Now, for one thing, we are the property of God by creation and by redemption. So we are God's. Everything we have is given by God and belongs to God. Everything that we have, everything that we are, ought to be committed, firstly, to the glory of God. The reason we're here on this earth is to serve God. The real object of life is ministry. So the capabilities that God has given to us, first and foremost, are His. So what's included in these talents that God has given to His children? Let's start with what we find in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're going to begin in verse 8. To one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills. Jesus promised the gift of the Holy Spirit. And this is really how the goods of heaven that the parable speaks of are given to the followers of God. The gifts of the Spirit are given to be used for the glory of God. Wisdom, healing, discernment, miracles, tongues, knowledge, not for us, but for God's glory. Your spiritual gifts or opportunities are talents that God has given. Now, what other talents does God give? Jesus talked about the person who was given five talents, and then there's the one who was given just one talent. Large or small, doesn't matter. The question is, what can you do with what you have? So let's start with what's most important. God has given you the gift of salvation. What are you doing with that? Now, God wants us to grow in grace, to mature as believers. No one should be today where they were five years ago, or even one year ago, in terms of Christian growth. There are victories to win, bad habits to break. You've got a Christian character to develop. And God has promised to do the work in you that you plain and simply cannot do yourself. Philippians 1 verse 6, what does the Bible say? Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it 
until the day of Jesus Christ. Jude verse 24 tells us that Jesus is able to keep you from falling. And Ephesians 4.13 says, Till we all come to the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. People ready to meet Jesus when He returns are described in Revelation 14 verse 12 this way. It says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Revelation 14 and verse 12. As long as you have spiritual growing left to do, there's a return on the talent God has given you that God is waiting to receive. The gift of salvation, definitely a talent to be used and developed for the glory of God. Now, God has given everyone a mind. What are you doing with yours? Getting an education and increasing your abilities and your usefulness for God honors God. Laziness doesn't. If you can do better at school, that gives you, in most cases, an opportunity to do more for God. Not everyone's called to get a doctorate, but it's pretty obvious that learning and developing and getting educated make it far more likely that you'll be able to give God more than if you, say, dropped out of school. The sharper your intellect, the more you can do in God's service. Which leads me to this, the talent of your health. Now, many people wouldn't think of one's health as a talent given by God, but it is. It's a capability, an opportunity. So if you're damaging your health, what's that saying to God about the way you value that talent? Here's what we know. Smoking, drinking, illegal drugs, sundry other things, they're very damaging. You can shorten your life by making poor lifestyle choices. You can extend your life by making wise lifestyle choices. Now, sometimes there's not anything that you can do to prevent a problematic health condition. That's understood. But there are tons of people who are eating themselves to death. You have a fatal heart attack at 55 because you are careless with your body. You've robbed God of maybe 30 years of service. That's not inconsequential. We have a duty to keep ourselves in the best shape possible. Now, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19. It says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Then 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says, Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Notice that? All to the glory of God. God isn't glorified when we make choices that damage us, that kill us, that weaken our bodies or our minds. If there's a bad habit that's controlling you, let God bring it under control and get it out of your life. Our talents are given to us by God. They should be used first and foremost for God. Now, I've got one that you probably haven't thought about as a talent. You have this talent, and it's really important. And I'm going to tell you what it is in just a moment. In Matthew 4.4, the Word of God says, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Every Word is a one-minute Bible-based daily devotional presented by Pastor John Bradshaw and designed especially for busy people like you. Look for Every Word on selected networks or watch it online every day on our website, itiswritten.com. Receive a daily spiritual boost. Watch Every Word. You'll be glad you did. Today, I'd like to ask you to help It Is Written open the eyes of the blind. India has more blind people than any country on earth, but simple cataract surgery can make the difference between seeing and not seeing for many people. Eyes for India is a project that's providing cataract surgery for people in desperate need of the gift of sight. Please help today. Call 800-253-3000. You can also donate online at itiswritten.com. Please call 800-253-3000 or write to P.O. Box 6, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401 or visit itiswritten.com. 
Thanks for joining me today on It Is Written. We're looking at the parable of the talents found in Matthew chapter 25. Luke's version of this parable is found in Luke 19. What we have, all we have, is given to us by God. Therefore, we owe it all to God. We should serve Him with everything that we are and everything that we have. All our possessions, our wealth, our opportunities should be dedicated to God. Obviously, money can do an enormous amount of good for God. It's a talent. Think about the money that many people waste. Look, if you bought a coffee, one a day, five days a week, that could easily be $20 a week, therefore $1,000 or more a year for something that isn't going to help you and is going to harm you. That's what we call a waste. A friend of mine told me, my wife and I, he said that we've cut our satellite TV, got rid of it. The money we were spending that we're now saving and we're giving to God's work. That's an investment. You might be making a car payment that you don't need to make. People will spend thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars on a vehicle they'll admit to you they don't need to have. They might call it a toy or a hobby. Imagine what God could do with some of that money that we fritter away. Every cent spent on alcohol is money that's not glorifying God, but is glorifying Glorifying who, do you suppose? Now, this parable helps us to orient our lives. The life of a believer in God is to be a life of service, not a life that's all about self, a life that's about what we can get out of this world for us. Now, I mentioned a moment ago there's a talent that you have that most people wouldn't think of as fitting into this parable. It's an important one, and you have as much of it as anyone else does. It's the talent of time. Every person alive has the same amount of time in a day. 24 hours, 1,440 minutes, 86,400 seconds. Imagine if God asked you to explain to Him what you're doing with your time. You can't get back lost time. Once it's gone, it's gone. No, life isn't all about industry. You'd better get some rest. You'd better have a healthy balance in your life. But if you listened to an audiobook while you're commuting, you'd learn something. If you read a book while you're on the bus or the train, you'd be ahead. Attend a class at the local community college or university. You'll improve yourself. Think of opportunities you might have to read the Bible. You're waiting for an appointment. Instead of grabbing your phone and playing a game or reading the news, read the Bible. You'd be way ahead. Anyone who's got time to binge watch a TV series has time to binge read the Bible, or they've got time to spend with their children, or got time to get exercise. Imagine using your time wisely to the glory of God. How different would life be if we all did it? How different would the church be? It says in Romans 12, 11, that we should be not slothful in business, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Ecclesiastes 9, 10 says, Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. Good advice in the Word of God. Time is given to us to use wisely. Successful people are not people who waste time. Successful Christians, just the same. Now, how does the parable resolve? Let's get to the resolution of this in Matthew chapter 25, and we'll pick it up in verse 20. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. God is looking to us to give him a return on his investment. Heaven made history's greatest investment when Jesus died for the world. What does he want back? He wants you. That means He wants you to be connected to Him. And when you are, then your life is fruitful. I want you to notice this. God gives us responsibilities and opportunities because He wants us to have more. He wants to bless us more. You want to be the sort of person that God can bless and bless and bless. The same thing happened with the one who'd been given two talents. And then we read this in verse 24. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. 
and I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now this might seem harsh, but it isn't. Remember this is a parable. Not every aspect of a parable has a direct parallel or meaning. The servant who got the one talent charges that the master is a hard man. And the master answers by saying that even if it were true, which it isn't, he could have taken that talent and put it in the bank and increased its value. So why is that talent taken away? Because that's how it is in life. If you don't use it, you lose it. Think of the people who could have learned another language but didn't. Later in life, it's almost always too late. You could have learned a musical instrument. Later in life, you don't have the time. Or as a child, you learned, but then you let it go. You didn't pick up the trumpet or the violin or you didn't go to the piano. And later, it's gone. And a key point here is that you shouldn't think that because you have little talent or talents that you cannot do much. Oh, yes, you can. Thrive where God has planted you. If you're brilliant enough to run a Fortune 500 company, great. Do it to the glory of God. If your life is more humble, it's no less meaningful. God wants to use you where you are. He wants to use you as you are. And as He does, your sphere of influence will grow. Think of Medal of Honor recipient Desmond Doss, a medic in the military who became a national hero, the subject of a major motion picture simply because he was faithful where God had him. God didn't have him anywhere glamorous, but where he was, he gave himself to God. And his story is a story for the ages. Just be faithful where you are. Serve God. Let God use you. When he does, you'll be really blessed. When we have the opportunity to serve God and we don't take it, that's a loss for the kingdom of heaven. And it's a loss for us. There are a lot of people, even in the church, who are just there making up the numbers. They're not engaged in ministry. They're not doing anything to help another person know God better. They're losing the blessing. An hour or so east of Columbia, South Carolina, is Bishopville, South Carolina. That's where Pearl Fryer lives. He began to work in his yard years ago, decided that he wanted to win the Garden of the Month Award from the local garden club. Over time, his topiary garden has become a tourist attraction with about 500 shrubs and trees sculpted into an amazing array of whimsical and even inspirational shapes and forms. His garden has been praised by the Smithsonian. Pearl isn't a gardener. He's a now retired engineer with a three acre yard that he's worked at patiently for years and years. Truth is most anyone could have done what he's done, but not everyone has the patience to do what he's done. Not everyone would dedicate the time to create something so, so incredible. What are you doing with the talents that God has given you? Your skill, your time, your blessings. When you're all in with God, God is using you and he's growing you. When you're not, you're missing out. The world is missing out on what God could do through you. God's not receiving your service. He's not receiving your heart. I wonder if you could make a decision with me today to serve God wholeheartedly. Now, I'll admit decisions like that are, well, I don't want you to make a promise to God. Making promises to God just doesn't work. But you could believe the promises that God has made to you, where he's promised that he would work in your life. What would your life be like if you made God first in your business? If you made God first in your practice? If you made it your business to be a representative of God wherever you are? I remember being in Owensboro, Kentucky. This was about a quarter of a century ago. There was a large furniture store on the front, a big sign that said, our business is sharing Jesus. We just sell carpet to pay the bills. God first, the business was dedicated to him. Who are your talents dedicated to? 
What if you dedicated them to God? If you do, your life will never be the same again, and God will be honored and glorified. Finance is a big subject. Everybody wants to have enough money. How can you have God's blessing on your financial situation? I'd like to give you today's free offer, More Than Enough. To receive more than enough, simply call us, 800-253-3000. You could write to the address on your screen or visit us online at iiwoffer.com. That's 800-253-3000 or iiwoffer.com. Thank you for remembering that It Is Written exists because of the kindness of people just like you. To support this international life-changing ministry, please call us now at 800-253-3000. You can send your tax-deductible gift to the address on your screen, or you can visit us online at itiswritten.com. Thank you for your prayers and for your financial support. Our number again is 800-253-3000, or you can visit us online at itiswritten.com. Whether you have five talents or two talents or one talent, you can give it or give them to God and let God work through you in a way that would change your life and change the lives of others and help you to be an even greater blessing to those around you. I want to pray with you now. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we're thankful today that you care enough about us to bless us and give us talents. And then you want to make the most of those by encouraging us to live for you, to live for others, not just to live for ourselves. Friend, what can you do for God to give your talents to Him? Even if you're not sure, perhaps, perhaps you would say with me now and pray with me now, Lord, take what I am, take what I have, take my talents, my abilities, take my life, take my time, take my Christian witness, take my health, take my influence and use it for your glory. Lord, as you do, you'll grow us, you'll develop us, we'll be blessed. And we thank you, Lord, that through us, your plan is to reach others for your kingdom. So take us and use us and bless others and be honored, we pray. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next time. Until then, remember, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God.